Hey everyone, welcome back. Welcome back to the channel. My name's Grant and I'm a freelance photographer and graphic designer based in Queensland, Australia. And in today's video, we're going to talk about my love-hate relationship for the Panasonic Leica 12 to 60 mil zoom lens, okay? So this is going to be a good one. Let's roll that intro and let's get into it. Hey everyone, welcome back. So yeah, uh, the Panasonic Leica 12 to 60 mil f2.8 to f4 variable aperture lens. Why I love this lens, but at the same time, why I hate this lens too. Hate's a very strong word, <laughs> but why, look, I don't use this lens all the time in certain settings, okay? Um, let's get into the pros. Okay, as I said before, the pros are gonna really outweigh the cons of this lens, okay? And one of the best pros of this lens is the build quality. It's built absolutely at a very, very high level. Like all the Panasonic Leica lenses, this lens is built fantastically. Metal construction on the outside, the internal zoom uh, collar is plastic, okay? But everything else is metal, okay? The zoom ring is super smooth. Um, the focusing ring is super smooth as well. It's got a great amount of resistance for video. Um, it's not too tight, but it's also not too loose as well, okay? It's got a good um, amount of resistance for uh, manual focusing and video work. So the overall construction of this lens is brilliant. It's got a great lens hood. Um, it's, as I said, ma mostly metal, metal mount, of course, mostly metal and plastic construction, but it's built really, really well. The overall size of it is brilliant too. It's not too heavy, but then it's not too small as well. Image stabilization paired up with your Lumix G9, okay? You're gonna get the Sync IS paired up with your GH5. Um, it's a great lens for the GH5. It's a great lens I'm hearing for the GH6 camera that uh, Lumix recently released. A lot of people are getting great results with this lens paired up with the GH6. Image stabilization, great quality lens, great build. And then that brings to the optics and then also the image quality, okay? The images that this uh, lens produces are great, okay? Not just the photos, but also the video too. Um, the photos are super creamy, super crispy, the colors are absolutely great. Um, this lens can have good subject separation, zoomed into 60 mil, so you can get some good portraiture with it. Skin tones look great. Um, yeah, look, any of the Leica Panasonic collaborated lenses, they're all, all gonna produce great image results, okay? So the image quality is absolutely fantastic, and then it's the versatility, okay? The versatility of this lens is brilliant. 12 to 60, so you're getting a 24 to 120 full frame equivalent lens in a compact little system like most uh, Lumix or Micro Four Thirds lenses. They're not honking big like the, the full frame lenses. So it's a great general purpose walk around lens. You know, if you're following around the family, uh, going to parties and stuff like that, this lens really shines in those conditions, giving the right lighting conditions too. Um, we're gonna get into that a bit later. But yeah, great general purpose lens to be glued onto your Lumix G9, to be glued onto your GH5. Um, yeah, absolutely fantastic. This lens I found is also great for product photography and shooting details. Um, I have shot, well, I've had it in my bag for wedding photography. And I do whip this lens out a lot for when it comes to products and shooting details, brides bouquets, ring shots, uh, cufflinks, watches, anything that requires any detail photography, this lens has got it covered. You're not gonna get macro um, results with this lens, but it still does the job for details. Uh, as I said, general purpose photography, really, really good. But then also, this is a great street photography lens too. The 12 mil gives you a really good sort of landscape, urban landscape um, view. And then it also, you know, zoomed in, 
you're gonna get some great urban slices, graffiti, details, grunginess. It's really, really good for zooming in at that 60 or 120 mil. You know, you can really isolate cool slices of street photography and stuff like that. And then, you know, you work your way through the range. You've also got like 25 mil there. So then that's your nifty 50, that's your 50 mil equivalent. Um, and yeah, it's just a really good general purpose lens for certain styles of photography, in particular street photography, details, shooting friends and family, just to be glued on your Lumix G9, absolutely perfect, okay? Um, and there's a whole heap of other things that are really, really great about this lens. Um, let me know down below, but before we get into that, let's get into the cons of the lens, in my humble opinion. Okay, the cons of the lens. Um, I did say it was well built and stuff, but um, it's an external zoom, okay? On the G9, you don't notice it that much, or the GH5, you don't notice it that much, but on the smaller Lumix cameras like the GX9 or the GX8, GX80 or whatever, it is, 85, whatever it is, um, this lens does have a little bit of um, dive to it on those particular cameras. And, you know, that's, I used to have this camera paired up for my GX9. And it was just sort of at times just too much, too much dive and stuff like that. What I think would remedy that is that if they made this lens an internal zoom, okay? So if, if they had it mounted, a casing mount it much like the 35 to 100 f 2.8 that's an internal zoom that would be great if this lens is would be an internal zoom too i think that would have fixed some of those dive issues however um, as you can see this lens is also very breathable as well okay it doesn't take much for it to be extended and to be pushed back in so the extended uh i should say the external zoom if it was encased in a housing um, i think it would have been much much better um, and more even a better build if it was an internal zoom okay so it is a bit top heavy on certain cameras for me in my opinion and also the external uh, zoom eh, not really my sort of thing I much prefer the f2.8 uh, sorry the uh, 35 to 100 f2.8 that's an internal zoom I don't know why they couldn't have done that to this lens too but anyway Let's get on to my number one reason why I can't stand this lens. The number one reason why I don't like this lens, I'm not gonna say hate because that's too much of a strong word. There's too much hate in the world. The reason I don't like this lens is the variable aperture, okay? So for me, it comes down to workflow. Uh, if I'm running and gunning and I'm thinking on my feet I, and I'm picking an aperture, I want it to stay at that aperture throughout the zoom range. That's why I do turn to the 12 to 35 more or the 35 to 100 when I'm using zoom lenses because it's got that constant f2.8. f2.8 to f4 uh, for me is unusable in certain situations. Yeah, of course there's workarounds and stuff like that. That's me being just a little bit pedantic and stuff like that. But for me, it's slowing down my workflow, particularly in professional settings. If the light's a bit low, this lens for me is a no-go. That rhymes. Um, yeah, of course, there's workarounds for it, changing your settings and stuff like that. I shoot fully manual, as you all know. But even a hint after 12 mil, your aperture's stopping down. So as soon as you get to all the way out to, F, uh, to 60 mil, you're at F4, okay? So in the heat of battle, when I'm producing content for clients and stuff like that, and I zoom, it's getting darker straight away, I'm adjusting, okay? I need that constant aperture all the way throughout. I would have rather this been a constant F4 all the way through rather than the variable 2.8 to F4, okay? And that's just me. Um, as I said, you know, there's definitely workarounds with this lens and in good light, not so bad, but when it gets a bit darker conditions, the variable aperture really hinders my workflow and that's where it comes into it. It's, it's slowing down my work for my ability to produce content quickly for my clients, in my opinion. That's where, you know, this lens would stay in the bag and I'd rather use an adapted Canon F4 lens with my Viltrox because that's a constant aperture. That brings that down to F2.8. The focusing, the autofocus is not as good. However, at least I get that constant F2.8. I'm not having to adjust my settings all the time as soon as I zoom anywhere in okay so yeah that's the biggest gripe for me and this lens 
I don't know why they couldn't have made it a constant f2.8 all the way through. It would have been the ultimate zoom lens for Micro Four Thirds. Panasonic Leica uh, contribution to the Micro Four Thirds ecosystem. If that was an f2.8, oh, we would have been laughing. But it's not. And yes, there is workarounds for it. But for me, uh, it just hinders my workflow lot, right? So let me know what you think. I'd love to hear your opinions. Do you feel as though that I'm being too pedantic with it and, you know, I need to sort of, you know, suck it up and just, you know, learn to deal with it more? Or do you agree with me? Do you think the, con the you know, the variable aperture is no good? For me, variable aperture lenses, they're not really my thing. Um, I only had this lens because it come with my GX8, which I sold anyway. But yeah, so let me know. Subscribe to the channel. Uh, this video is a little bit more sort of like, I don't like doing the these sort of things where I sort of hate a product and stuff like that um, or you know why I don't like certain things I always try to keep this channel fairly positive and stuff when it comes to gear particularly around the G9 and micro four thirds you know what I mean but yeah let me know what you think and yeah until next time I'll see you all later bye